Hello everyone, this is Tanner the Banana, back with another video. And today, we're going to be focusing on another game. And that is this game, New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Now before we get into the video, let me just put on my special hat. Perfect. Cap? Check. Mario impression? A double check! Facial hair... Oh, I forgot. Well then. Maybe I could just put a mustache on myself. It's still not the same. So then, without further ado, let's get into this video. So in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Mario and friends are inside of Princess Peach's castle celebrating her birthday. But then, all of a sudden, the Koopalings come out of the cake and steal Princess Peach again. Like every other game. I'm serious. Bowser needs a new hobby. And seriously though, we've known the Koopalings since the 80s and they're still kids? Did they pull an Ash Ketchum on us or something? But yeah, anyway, we go through all the worlds, we beat their butts, and then we get to Bowser and beat him again, and then we get to save Princess Peach again. Man, it's probably the worst birthday ever for, for Peach, considering that she always gets kidnapped by a a giant turtle dragon thingy. So here's the thing I like about New Super Mario Bros. Wii. The multiplayer. The multiplayer has been introduced to this game and it has been a blast. Sure it can be a pain, but I digress. It is still very fun to play multiplayer with your friends and family and you will have a fun time playing this game in multiplayer. The one complaint about it that I have though is that you have to play as Toads as well. I mean seriously, Toads? Really? I mean yeah, they're the one of the only things in the Mushroom Kingdom that you have to play, but seriously, we could play like Wario and Waluigi, but they don't have anything to do with saving the princesses and stuff. So uh, I guess that makes sense. But yeah, the next thing I like about this game is the new power-ups. Personally, I like the flight power-up. Yes, it's sort of a knockoff of the leaf power-up from Super Mario Bros. 3, but I still like it very much because I can fly. Next power-up is the Ice Flower, and the Ice Flower has been first introduced into Super Mario Galaxy number 1, which makes Mario look like a crystallized version of himself, but then moved into this game wearing blue. And you know what else the ice flower can do? Once you bounce an ice ball to a Goomba or a Koopa Troopa, you instantly turn it into ice. And the best part is, you get to pick it up and throw it at your enemies. And that is the one, one of the greatest things I have ever seen in this video game. All we've seen is the firepower but that is still very awesome, and it makes my childhood. Much like this game. This game has made my childhood a lot better than it ever has in a Mario game. The next power-up is the Penguin power-up, which is basically a knockoff of the frog suit. But it is still very good. We still have the swimming animations for it. It's been moved from Super Mario Bros. 3 to this game. And you know what else you can do with the penguin suit? You can slide on ice with it. 
Only ice, though. Ground does not work for the penguin suit. I mean, the whole game is a recreation of Super Mario Bros. 3, but it's still very good, and I like it very much. The next one is Yoshi's. The Yoshis you can get in sort of all sorts of different variations of colors. And the best thing about having a Yoshi in this game is that you can flutter in the air for a short amount of time now. You don't have to throw your Yoshi off a, into a cliff while jumping off of it anymore. Take that, Nintendo. Then again, you did create the flutter animation, so never mind. And the next thing that I like from this old game is the old power-ups, such as the first mushroom and the fire flower, the mini mushroom, and the star. Unfortunately, no mega mushroom as it did not appear in this game. But allow me to tell you why I like these power-ups very, very much. Not only is the mushroom a callback from the Mario games, but it also gives you the ability to grow into a Super Mario, and it can keep you protected until you get hit by an enemy. The Fire Flower is also a comeback. I mean, yes, we got the Ice Flower, but it's a very nostalgic comeback, and uh, it's been one of the greatest part of our childhood since New Super Mario Bros. DS. And uh, the Mini Mushroom turns you very mini. It turns you into a Mini Mario, like in New Super Mario Bros. DS. And it is a very cool feature. I don't know why they didn't add the Mega Mushroom in this game, but that's fine. And the star turns you very much invincible so that you can go through your enemies with your star power-up. And that is why I like these old power-ups because they bring back the memories and childhood that I've been through, and it's been quite such an experience with these old power-ups along with these new power-ups. The next thing I like about this game are the mid-bosses that you have to go through. If you complete the mid-bosses in each world, well, you don't have to go through the mid-bosses, but it's quite... Uh, it gives you a 50-50% chance of you actually dodging it, but if the enemy gets to you first, then you'll have to fight the mid-bosses. And if you win the mid-bosses, a toad from a treasure chest will give you three mushrooms, which is a pretty, that is, that is a pretty good deal. I mean, if you're running out of items for your from your inventory, it's actually a pretty good deal that you get three extra mushrooms. And that is what I liked about the mid-bosses. And the next one is the Bowser Jr. fights. When you go on a Doom ship, like in Super Mario Bros. 3, you get to face Bowser Jr. in his little hovering, uh in his hovering pirate ship thingy. And when you go inside of it, you get to meet Bowser Jr. And uh, I, I am not sure if you get to face him uh, two or three times, but I'm gonna say the, the first fight when you, when you go into a clown car and beat, try to beat um, Bowser Jr. into an electric fence, it's pretty satisfying to see Bowser Jr. get electrocuted by his own electrical wall as he tries to push you into his electrical wall, making you lose your power-up. But that is totally fine, because you will win anyways. And the next boss 
in World 8, when you fight Bowser Jr. again, he will drop these bombs on you, and you have to ground pound in a precise, uh, in a precise moment where Bowser Jr. is in the line of his own bomb so that you explode his clown car and win the boss. And that is why I like the Bowser Jr. bosses better than the other Koopalings. Because they, the Koopalings honestly are so easy to beat. It's like a piece of cake. And that's all the time I have for this video today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. And let me know what else you want me to do in the next video. Bye-bye.